most quote unquote teams that are, are put together haphazardly. And usually the complaint is with mega agents, which is, you know, very valid is, you know, I hire great people, I train them and then six, nine months later, they leave. Hey guys, just wanted to pop on and bring uh, someone that I've been a fan of for years. So we are bringing on Vlad Katz to talk to you guys about many mistakes that real estate teams are making. If anybody knows teams, it's Vlad. But Vlad, tell us a little bit about yourself and what's happening with teams. And it's my pleasure. And Tanya, thank you so much for having me on. It's, it's, it's really cool that you're, you know, you're spending so much time bringing, uh, bringing massive value specifically to the top real estate leaders who may be thinking about building teams or maybe already running teams, et cetera. I, look, I, I can spend a bunch of time talking about my background. Here's what I'll tell you and uh, anybody who's watching or listening. I've been a mega agent. I've coached and consulted mega agents. I ran, uh, I started and ran multiple brokerages. Uh, up to about 500 agents. I was a CEO of one of the top expansion organizations in the United States. At one point, we we're doing almost 100 transactions per month. To, just to kind of give you an idea, the reason those numbers are tiny are important, in my opinion, is because it puts me in a very unique position where I've seen real estate, quote unquote, teams from all different directions. And I currently advise some of the top real estate producers in the United States, like on ongoing basis. So look, again, there's kind of two components to it. There's, there is, uh, there's gaps that uh, team owners have that relate to almost any, any organization out there. So leadership, for example, like you mentioned, is one of them. You know, focus on profitability is another one. Paying attention to the bottom line is a weakness for most of us. And then I would say another one that's general to almost any small business is also focused mm -hmm. on operations. So I would think, you know, the general ones, and that's kind of how I look at it is profitability or focus on profitability, knowing your numbers, et cetera, focusing on yourself and focusing on others, i.e. leadership. And then the third one is focusing on operations, like how the sausage is actually made. Because when, when you look at a, uh, whether it's sales organization or not, operations is what allows you to become duplicatable. So when, yeah. when somebody's talking about growth of the organization, operations is a part of the foundation. When somebody's talking about expanding into a different market, what they expand is their business systems. Because it, it, as you know, as I know, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to expand back based on your like personal genius, right? Yeah, and another word for that is how do you scale? Yeah, and exactly. Like your personal genius is not a scalable asset. Okay. Unless you're, look, unless you're like Gary V, unless you're an influencer, right? What yes. typically scales is the systems of the organization. And so most, and again, this is not just, this is not just for real estate professionals. Any business owner that I talk to will have at least some weaknesses in the operations. So those are the, the gaps where folks with real estate teams can relate to other businesses, not just in real estate. And then there's mistakes or gaps that are specific to the real estate uh, professionals and especially mega agents, the higher production, the bigger the gap. I would say that based on just my like intimate observation of, of uh, mega agent communities, most quote unquote teams, and I'll tell you why I'm air quoting in, in a minute, um, are put together haphazardly. In, in other words, most mega agents are essentially victims of their own success, meaning they're such great salespeople or they're mm -hmm. at the right place at the right time that sooner or later they reach this point where it's kind of like, holy moly, I need 28 hours in a day and yes. I cannot buy four hours a day like on Amazon. So I am forced to bring on people. Or so let's get to things that are re really specific based on my observation to mega agents and specifically those with teams, okay? So one of the things that I've observed, Tanya, is they, um, they actually don't, uh, don't understand the differences between different structures of teams. When, when I ran the, the first real estate office that we started, um, you know, by the time we got to about 300 or so agents, uh, we had a number of teams 
there. However, some teams never got together, but they were a team. And some, some teams met every morning at 8.30, did affirmations, did script practice, you know, and then they, they hung out for a few hours, did lead generation calls, and then they would all go to, to their showings or listing appointments or whatever it is. Everybody knew where everybody was. And then by the end of the day, they had like a team huddle, okay? And so that was called a team. And then people that never got together but had the same logo on the business card also were called a team. And that, <laughs> And so when people came to me and said like, look, how do I... Do this the first question I have to ask is like, what does a team actually mean to you? And like the That's more I work with question. right. And then the more I work with the with the top producers around the country, that's it, it's kind of like an almost an unanswerable question, okay, for most folks. So you know, one so Tanya, what I did is I, I'm actually in the process of finishing a book that's gonna go into what I call the five definitions of a of a real estate team and it goes from what i call a real estate social club which by the way a lot of teams are like that and there's no there's no judgment it's like it just that's what you have as a real estate social club people kind of come and go all the way out to a real estate network which is a totally different definition and knowing what you have and knowing what you want and actually having the right structure in place understanding the different structures creates clarity yes and clarity that is actually i believe your superpower as a coach and mentor every single time i call you then you just ask these simple questions and then i'm clear thank you tanya so you know i i would you will be one of the first people that will get that book because i want your i want your input on that okay and Mm -hmm. i was like and, and thank you for saying that like i believe that if you're not clear that you have, get clear, then go do. Get clear, then mm-hmm. that go do. Okay, so that's one, okay? So understanding the different structures. Um, the second one, specific to real estate agents, is most don't understand who they're hiring. Mm-hmm. So let me, let me, you know, uh, let me kind of give you an example. See, most real estate professionals, uh, those with teams, they want to hire salespeople. Mm-hmm. And the question I ask, well, are you actually looking for salespeople or are you lo- actually looking for people that will service your clients? Yes. And it's usually like this type of a conversation. Well, hold on a second. I'm not sure. And I'm like, okay, great. Let's get sure there first. Because mm-hmm. that is a very different human being. Yes. So for example, here's, here's the difference. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with an international organization called Starbucks. When you walk into Starbucks, okay, you are actually not expecting anybody to sell you anything. You're walking into Starbucks to buy coffee or tea, and somebody asks you, Tanya, what would you like? You tell them, you know, whatever, and they hand it to you. So that's one type of a human being versus you walking into a car dealership that's not a CarMax. That's a salesperson. Yes. So understanding who you need in order for you to be profitable, productive, whatever, to, in order for you to reach your goal, like that's a really simple question. Are you actually looking for a salesperson like yourself or are you looking for a servicer? And that's a starting point because a team full of salespeople is kind of like, well, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but you can imagine a team full of just salespeople is a totally, di- a totally different team than a t- like Starbucks. Yeah, it's also from a disc scale because I'm a disc uh, facilitator. You got all these Ds, yeah. you got all the Indians and not enough Chiefs. <laughs> oh my God, it's a, it's a cluster mess. Yeah. I see, I see it all the time. I come in and I'm like... It, you know, and usually the complaint is with mega agents, which is, you know, very valid is, you know, I hire great people, I train them, and then six, non- six nine months later, they leave. Yes. You hired somebody who is going to, who's just like you, that's going to learn this very, very fast, just like you did. And then they're going to say, why am I paying you 50%? 
I can yes. go get my own clients yes. as an example versus you realize that your organization produces all the leads, okay, produces all the clients. You're actually looking for a person to nicely serve your people. I call this I process. I really love that. You call that yeah, what? I call this process ideal agent profile. Ideal agent profile. Yeah, and I take people through it slowly, you know, ask again, ask the questions, and you know, it's a checklist. And then people have, again, this clarity is like, oh, hold on a second. I am looking for salespeople when I need servicers, or I'm looking for servicers when I need salespeople. Totally I, different profile, totally different this, totally different with Colby, whatever behavioral assessment somebody used, totally yeah. different, totally different yeah. environment. Here's a question that, you know, if you're a mega agent with a team and you have a retention issue, and uh, most people do, is, uh, is look at your super successful salespeople or super successful sales associates, okay? And figure out what their like mojo is, and then look at, and who are still with you, the ones that you would like to clone, and then look at those that came in and left, know, took off and then left. And then yeah. you're, you're going to start getting clarity. So when I advise my teams that I coach too, I have this phrase that, you know, everybody wants warm bodies, right? They're like, give me an agent. This, she, she's new. She, she, she's hungry. And I'm like, slow the Ferrari down. So low the Ferrari down. Do you want all of you? Okay. Because you're going to have a lot of personality. You're going to have a lot of people that want to do their own systems. You also need to have people that want to be led. And so you got to slow the Ferrari down and, and see the dynamics going back to disc is the dynamics of the team leader's personality and the team. And it really makes a difference when you get the, the right people and you do the ideal agent profile. Yeah, IAP, absolutely. And then I would say the 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 other thing that is, you know, kind of the the mega agents with teams fall into a trap into a trap with is they underestimate the power of their environment. Mm. So you know, most uh, most of the top producers, obviously, they're top producers. So you know, there's and and we kind of live like real estate industry. My observation of it is, is uh, very much like a trophy type of culture. There's nothing wrong with trophies. I want a bunch. I love getting trophies. But, uh, you know, once you start getting you know, kind of like in this one top 1%, you get celebrated and all of that stuff. So like you, 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 you actually, a lot of people think that they may have arrived. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> they, they, I'm but, with they you. but they credit oftentimes they've arrived because, you know, or excuse me, they arrived in spite of the environment that they're in, okay? Yes. And so there's, in an entrepreneurial world, there's so much emphasis on, I can do it. I got this, get out of my way. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It doesn't matter whether I'm in New York. It doesn't matter whether I'm in Baltimore. It doesn't matter whether I'm in Florida. It doesn't matter. Like, I got this, maybe. And here, here's, here's the way I look at it. Look, you know, my history is I was born and raised in the former Soviet Union. My parents took the risk and brought me here at the ten, tender age of 12. OK, I did not change molecularly when I crossed the border. OK, however, because I'm in a totally different environment, communism versus capitalism, mm -hmm. as a, just as a simple example, my abilities, my opportunities are totally different. Now, I'm still the same Vlad, again, molecularly, okay? But because of the environment, I, I have totally different opportunities. But mm -hmm. because most mega agents have already achieved, have arrived, they seem to, they discount the environment. Like it can happen anywhere for them. And then they are, like, it doesn't matter what brokerage I'm at, as an example. It doesn't matter like who I surround myself with because I'm here. The question that I have for most is, look, you got very far, okay, compared to what? Now, if you compare yourself to an average agent, yes, congratulations, you've gone very far. Now, if you compare yourself to your potential, then environment becomes a lot more important.
Okay. Mm -hmm. Now to you. So like you've gotten to where you are, but where could you have been? If Tony Robbins was coaching you every single day, where would you have been? And suddenly again, people lean back and they say, well, hold on a second. Maybe environment is important. And I'm not saying that it's, that it's environment is the thing. All I'm saying is that people tend to underestimate the power of the environment. People that you surround yourself with, and that includes your brokerage environment, that includes your mentors, that includes your advisors, that includes your coaches, that even includes your like family, right? Because yes. environment, to me, environment is different than habitat. Environment is more like about people. Habitat is about like physical uh, uh, environment, if you will. So it's a, so that type of a conversation usually creates a couple of light bulb moments where yes. folks understand that it's not how far I've come, it's how far can I go? Mm -hmm. I always tell people we're adulting and we're entrepreneurs and we're business owners and we are the sum total of our environment because your friends are in there, your family's in there. And I believe that that is the big key. And I also think that, you know, like in terms of the environment, it can only take you so far and you have to recognize I, this environment got me here, but how do I get to the next level? Is it going to get me to the next level? So back Absolutely. To I, I, and I think that that's another, that's, that's one of the biggest traps that mega yes. agents with, especially with teams fall into is not yes. paying attention to the environment that they're in. So Vlad, let's talk about your journey a little bit more. You know, you were at your former brokerage for over a decade, uh, made a massive, massive name for yourself, uh, created a, an amazing business. And you made the decision to come over to EXP for really your own reasons. But my question to you is why do you think mega agents, agent teams and um, huge teams are flocking to EXP at a, an incredible, incredible pace that said they would never, ever move their brokerage? <laughs> That's such a good question. Look, uh, Tanya, everybody has, everybody has their own reasons, right? And here's what, here's what I would assert is I think that mega agents specifically are waking up from a first time home buyer mindset into an investor mindset when it comes to which platform is going to support their real estate businesses. And here's what I mean by that. You know, you've worked with first-time home buyers. I've worked with first-time home buyers. There's nothing wrong with first-time home buyers. I love helping people succeed, buy their first homes, give them the keys, smiles, like tears, everything. American dream. I get it. Okay. And you know, when you think about working with a first-time home buyer or, or or having a first-time home buyer mindset, it's a lot of uncertainty. It's a lot of emotion. It's kind of like, I want to hold on to like, am I getting the right mortgage? I'm going to like, I'm going to get advice from my parents. And it's like, so it's, it's a very convoluted, emotional, financial, economical, like all of that is kind of like in this ball of wax. And that's, by the way, that a lot of mega agents are, when it comes to brokerage are kind of in that, like, I love my broker. Okay, great. You know, I love my office. Okay, great. I like all of that. Okay. I call that the first time home buyer mindset. Okay. How is that different from an investor mindset? Real simple. When it comes to working with investors, the question becomes is what is my ROI? Yes. And it becomes a numbers game. So the question that I have for anybody who is a mega agent or wants to become a mega agent is what is your current ROI? on one of the biggest expenses that you have in your business, which is how much, whether it's split or royalty or whatever it is, that you're paying whatever company that you're with. And then how does that ROI compare to, I don't know, to Remax? How does that ROI compare to EXP? How does that ROI compare to fill in the blank? Like this is not about, you know, EXP having the best ROI. No, it depends on your business. It yes. may not. Like there's, yes. it may not. However, you have to choose whether you want to stay in the mindset of a first time home buyer, nothing wrong with that, but it's a choice, or whether you want to be in the mindset of an investor, which is all about the ROI. And then once you figure out which one fits your 
like personality, your needs, like your future and all of that stuff. You just plan accordingly and act as such. You know, it actually reminds me of Mike Ferry. Mike Ferry has a script. And it, when you say, oh, I have a friend in the business. And he's like, great. I know lots of friends in the business too. So do you want a friend or do you want to sell your house? <laughs> right? And it's like, okay, everybody is a friend, but like, what are you looking for? If you're looking to make more money, right? If you're looking to build wealth, if you're looking for some sort of exit plan, are we home, first time home buyer or are we thinking investor? That's it. So again, yeah, welcome to the investor quadrant. If that's what you that's what you choose to do, and it's three letters, it's ROI, it's return on investment. And then the question is investment of what? It's investment of your resources, investment of your energy, invest in, investment of your finances. Like you get to measure it as a mega agent, okay? But only if you choose to. So I think that I that's the it. reason why so many are flocking is because they're realizing that they just get a much higher R ROI. If ROI is important to you then you need to think like an investor. Amen. Um, tell me when your book's going to come out and what's that book called again? I don't have a title for it yet. It should be by the end of this month. Okay. Well, I am very excited uh, to read your book and love having you. Every time I talk to you, I get so much wisdom. And thank you for your superpower, Clarity. And so if anybody here, um, if anything resonated with you, if you want to just hop on a call and ask either of us questions, let's let's talk right no pressure let's talk let's figure out where you where you are right where you want to go and see if we can you know help find you some solutions or give you a different perspective that works for me tanya I, once again i really appreciate the opportunity to to share my journey and to share some of the experiences and expertise that i've accumulated i'm very easy to find on you know such hidden places as facebook and uh, the world wide web at blackcats.com